is back, and so is your front row seat for all the action. From the sidelines to the end zone. It's the best high school football coverage in the Blue Ridge. This is Friday Night Blitz on WFXR. Time to get it on. Ah, yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hoping your day is wonderful and blessed. Time now for the start of our seventh season of Friday Night Blitz, and we kick off the action with our Game of the Week. Now, the Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week, sponsored by Don Hudson Insurance. Well, our first Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week on the season takes us to Daleville as the Lord Botox Cavaliers hosting the EC Glass Hilltoppers. These two teams opened up the season last year at City Stadium with Glass winning a shootout over LB 41 to 30. A lot is expected from both teams this season. So the Cavaliers stay we go, the place to be. This game was delayed by weather for about 30 minutes on the start. But Glass shows that they were ready to play tonight. How about George White at the 20, hooking up with Lavarius Gilbert. Nice catch in the zone. That's a touchdown. Glass goes up 7-0 later. Glass with the ball right back, and it is the quarterback, G-Dub, George White. He's going to hook up in the end zone as Tayon Mosby with a 31-yard score. Toppers up 14-0, but LB would come back. Jakari nicely. He was nice on this play on a fourth and goal. Calls his own number, gets it in. Touchdown, Botot within seven, but later Glass. They were back in the red zone, and it's George White. He calls his own number as well. Quarterback keepers. Anything you can do, I can do better. Got it in there. Toppers up 21 to seven. Glass, they go on and get the win tonight over LB 28 to 14. Let's hear from the head coach of the EC Glass Hilltoppers, Jeff Woody. Up front. Uh, those defensive linemen did a good job of, of facing a really good offensive line. We got the push, and we got speed on defense on the outside, and we were able to fly to the football. Now, nicely, um, and it, he found the lane several times, but he was never able to break it wide open, and, and that's where the speed on the outside helped to help us out a lot. It's never as bad as you think it is. We got to, we got to right some wrongs. We always do. Um, I thought we played well. I thought we played with a lot of effort. We did make some mistakes, but we'll fix those. We've got a good coaching staff. Uh, they did a great job tonight. Kids did a great job tonight. All I did was sit back and watch. Meanwhile, we have another seminal Blue Ridge District battle. Wayne Fleming Colonels visiting the Heritage Pioneer City Stadium in Lynchburg. Heritage with the ball. Jasir Bateman takes it and hands it off to Rashawn Booker Felder. Takes it into the house. Pioneers take the seven nothing lead. Tied at seven. And there's the Heritage Pioneer vehicle. It gets good gas mileage nowadays. Anyway, how about Zach Steele takes it into the house, putting the Pioneers up 13 to seven. But in Flemings, Devin Johnson, the Lewis English, my favorite class, takes it into the house. It's 14 to 13 Fleming in the first, but Heritage will get a late touchdown in the fourth to pull out the 32-28 win over Fleming. Meanwhile, back to Roanoke, an energetic crowd on hand for this one. As it was Toga Night, Patrick Gray Patriots hosting the Brookville Bees. Weather delayed this game for about 50 minutes, but it was a slow start for both teams. Scrolls at the start of the second when Drake McDaniel, D Mac, quarterback keeper, touchdown. Bees up seven to nothing. Later in the quarter, watch this play right here. One of the plays of the night. And there he is. Yeah, Drake McDaniel's happy. How about the block punch recovered by none other than Drake McDaniel? Does it on all ends. Touchdown. Brookville goes up 14 0, but the Patriots. They have a response on the ensuing kickoff. There's a reason why we show kickoffs because of plays like this. How about Kuali Carter, the junior, acting like a singer. The need for speed, find the hole. He makes a cut. The bigger the cuts, the bigger the rhyme. Takes it in to the house. PH's first score of the season on special teams, but Brooklyn will have to go on and hold off Patrick Curry tonight as they get the win. Jonathan Meeks' crew does it there, 35-27. to 27. Southwest Rondo County, the battle for Bogle, K-Spring, taking on Hidden Valley. Weather, stop me if you heard this before, delayed the start of this game for 30 minutes. The Knights defense making the highlight reel in the second half. Cave already up 21-0. Owen Sweeney takes it down the Titans into that end zone, forcing the safety, put the K-Spring Knights up 23 to zip. Later on, Nick Leftwich crew would get it going, lining up for a field goal attempt, but it was blocked by the Titans' Jacob Robinson with the recovery to put Hidden Valley in business. But after the Titans, they fumbled the ball. K Spring, come and knock on my door for another touchdown, landing all Tizer. Guess what? Another quarterback run. We love when the quarterback score. His third of the night, and the Knights take a 30 0 lead. They go on to win this rivalry game, shutting out Hidden Valley tonight, 37 to nothing. Coming up on Friday Night Blitz in the opening week, we head over to North Cross for a playoff rematch. The Raiders 
this offseason, taking it this afternoon. This is the Home Team Fan Cam, sponsored by Hometown Automotive Service. to the Blitz, Friday Night Blitz on WFXR. Time to get it on. And welcome back to Friday Night Blitz right here on WFXR. Of course, week one of the season. We appreciate you watching us. Well, we have a playoff rematch from last season as North Cross hosting Nansman Suffolk. Now, last year, the Raiders beat Nansman Suffolk in the VIS AA Division II semifinals, 55 to 14. Raiders head coach Steven Alexander looking on. He would like what he would like to see from his team in the first quarter. How about Connor Lang with a nice fake out? Fake me out. Look at that. That was like no look almost 40 yards to the house. Raiders go up six to nothing after the miss extra point. But then it is Lang. He's going to go to the air, hook up with Ian. Yes, I can with a touchdown. It's 12 nothing a North Cross. But then more Lang, this time on the screen pass to the fresh freshman, Jazeel. You got to have heart or you got to have heart. You got to have legs to take it to the end zone. When you wear 23, you got game. 19 nothing Norcross, while a long lightning delay caused the game not to be resumed. The game was called Norcross leading this one in the second as it was suspended 26 to nothing. Meanwhile, over at Vineyard Park in Venton, the Ronald Catholic Celtics hosting the Allegheny Mountaineers. Of course, this is the last season of football for Allegheny as they'll merge with Covington in the first quarter after the team's traded turnovers. Allegheny's Eli Itzmaker to Xavier Hazlett with a nice grab, and he did have the foot in. That's all you need in high school. 7 nothing Mountaineers, but after a Celtic turnover, the Mountaineers, Garrett Villa, he's going to run it in for the touchdown. Four in the program, number one in your house, 14 nothing Allegheny, and Itzmaker with the screen to guess who? How about Garrett Villa? He's going to run down the sideline. That boy is gone. Takes it to the house. It was 21 to nothing. Allegheny all in the first quarter. Allegheny opens up the season with a 40 to 12 win over Roanoke Catholic. Let's go down to the newer Valley. I 81 Blacksburg. It's annual season opening meeting between the Bruins and Giles Spartans. Game was delayed nearly 90 minutes due to weather. Third play of the first possession of this ball game was so nice. We're going to let it breathe a little bit. Blacksburg Spencer Campbell is going to make the nice short pass to Carter Ackerman, who is going to do the rest. 60 yards to the zone. The Bruins take a 7 to nothing lead. Not to be outdone, though. Giles with the single wing. That's all they do in Giles. They run the single wing to perfection. That's why they're one of the best teams in our area. As you're going to see the direct snap to Kalik Saunders, who takes it in. The game was tied at seven right now. It's in the fourth quarter, and it is Giles leading Blacksburg by a score of 28 to 14. Meanwhile, last night in the New River Valley area, the 83rd meeting between Radford and George Wythe. First quarter, first play of the game, George Wythe, Ben Jolly. And he was jolly here. He's just, no, get off me. Get off me, son. I can run hard. And that's a nice run brought down to the 35. And then Ben Jolly, a few plays later, is going to call his own number in the red zone, takes it to the house. The Maroons, may we call it the Maroon zone, six to nothing lead. Now, the Bobcats first was a quarterback, Landon Clark. It's like a stiff arm festival. One stiff arm, two stiff arms. Can I get a third stiff arm? Uh, moving around. Yes, I'm going to move around. And I think I do get a third stiff arm. I got it in there, picking up a few yards. But the next play, P squared Parker Prelu. His dad was a great player, running like his dad used to back in the day at Virginia Tech and Radford, all those schools. Look at the stiff arm there. He says, Landon, hey, I got your stiff arm. Touchdown, the extra point. Radford goes up 7-6. to six. The Bobcats, they get the W tonight, 29-15. to 15. It's time for the Friday Night Blitz Player of the Week, sponsored by Tater Benson of MKB Realtors. Now, at this time of the show, we will have our player of the week. Of course, Ryan Moy, he's going to shine the spotlight on our top player. And we had so many candidates to choose from. It's going to be a tough choice. But you can check out our first player of the week. That will be coming up next week on Friday Night Blitz. Up next on Friday Night Blitz, we have our play of the night, plus some mothers. They get a taste of what their kids go through on a Friday night. And now, the Macadidit Play of the Night. Sponsored by McAdoo's. 
I tell you what, Maca did it. Parker, prelude. Guess what he does? Last night, the stiff arm, the run, the hard, and he just throws people down, just like his daddy used to do. That's going to be the touchdown as the Bobcats, they win last night, 29 to 15, and Maca did it, Parker. So good job right there. And of course, each and every week, we'll have those plays of the night. Well, we want to get a look at a few of the games that we went final. We weren't able to make it out there tonight, but it's okay because we got you covered with the score. So we're going to check those out right here. You see that it is a good matchup there. Galax winning over Glenver 27 to 20 in that matchup. So a battle of the G's ain't nothing but a G thing. Carroll County as uh, they win big over Patrick County 56 to 25. Also on the scoreboard, it is a good battle. Rockbridge County two points better than Perry McClure in that battle between Buena Vista and Lexington. Rockbridge by two. Meanwhile, the Liberty Christian Academy with the big win over Magna Vista shutting them out 40 to nothing the final in that matchup. Well, guess what? Football moms, they are an invaluable part of high school players' life. Now, a few of those moms in Washington, Illinois, got their moment in the sun this week. Video of mothers tackling their football playing sons during the school's annual Moms Night designed to get mothers to play football. Now, to get them more acquainted with the game, now the table had a laugh as a footage rolled of at least four mothers dressed in their helmets and shoulder pads, taking turns tackling their own football playing sons who stood in front of a large mat in full gear. Look at this one. This is probably my favorite. Boom! That reminded me of Waterboy when uh, Adam Sandler's mom, Kathy Bates, made the tackle. Well, with the Virginia Tech Hokies football team kicking off the season a week from tonight down in Norfolk at Old Dominion, this afternoon head football coach Brent Pry took time out of his schedule as the guest speaker of the Roanoke Valley Hokie Club's annual kickoff luncheon at the Hidden Valley Country Club. Now, for Coach Pry, he has spent a lot of the time crisscrossing the state to rebuild relationships with Hokie Nation. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, the Hokie Club is so important to what we do, and so it's an honor and a privilege to come here and, and break bread with them and share a little bit about what's going on with our team and shake a bunch of hands and take photos. It's important they know how much we appreciate it. Now, coming up on September 9th, the Roanoke Valley Hokie Club will have former defensive coordinator Bud Foster speaking to the club right then and there. And coming up next week, we will have our Friday our edition of WXR Sports Countdown, a kickoff as the WXR Sports team gets you ready for the 2020 college football season. Join myself, David Guzman, and Ryan Moy. That's coming up next Wednesday, 5.30, only on WFXR. Well, it does it for this edition of Friday Night Blitz, week one of the regular season. We'll have this show on WFXRTV.com momentarily. So we want to thank you guys for watching our show. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hope all of your teams are winners. Have a wonderful and blessed night and weekend, everybody.